Hello everybody, this is the Bird Squala commentary group here, Dr. John Reborn with Shank02 And we are continuing on with Metal Gear Rising Revengeance And in the previous episode, well, I think I got fucked up, shall we say lightly or when it's put in nicely, but as we can see here, three weeks later, so far, he's so pimping in a new goddamn this. awesome cyborg suit. Let so let now it's that. time to kick ass yes, and claim yes, names. So, huh? I mean, yep. how does it feel to fly like a bird? Like a bird strapped to a remote control rocket. <laughs> also, I guess the since the there isn't going to be Just too much of an important stuff ride. going on during this. This cutscene just going to basically explain the settings of the chapter, shall we say. I might as well get this out of the way. It, this is the... From here here on out, this game is going to become relatively cutscene heavy. So there's going to be a ton of cutscenes in these, these parts. parts. And because of that, they are a little bit longer than the previous. Yes, parts during the tutorial chapter, so just a little heads up there. I'm just basically trying to edit them in so that they got away or segue way at an appropriate point. So this is basically Doctor's Amiibo kind of hand collection thing? Um, yeah, basically, and uh, that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's one way of putting it. And speaking of the hands, there's so sort of an, sort of an thing you can collect in this game from enemies. It's not necessary, but uh, it does offer you quite a bit of points, which, which I guess I should also point this out that some of you probably noticed that in the end of previous episode at the start of this I didn't show the result screen of the practice chapter that is because the battle points I mean, what we can get throughout this game don't really matter until after chapter 1 because that's when they introduce the upgrades so I decided to just leave that out mm. but anywho the hands they basically offer you some need extra points for your total but I usually aren't too obsessed about them because because some we say sometimes getting the hands can be a little bit nitpicky. So just basically like the dog tags in the Metal Gear Solid series, like you just held like the enemy at hostage and then just made them shake the dog tags off to collect them. Yeah, kind of like that. that. Not really worth anything at all, basically. Uh, well. If you want to just see, like, the actual people's names in the game or somewhere, right. I guess. Ready for yeah. Insertion. Well, actually, actually, it's kind of a close comparison, but actually collecting all the hands does actually a more give you a sort of a need of word. I just never bothered getting it because getting all of the hands is a little bit annoying. Right, because sometimes you basically need to cut up your enemy's left hand and sometimes let's just say when you're hacking and slashing you up the end up slicing up the the hand the the hand in the wrong way so yeah uh, they can be a little bit hard to get if you're sort of reckless but if you do get them all I think Doctor is going to give Raiden's main plate one hell of an upgrade. I don't recall Wait. exact exact statistics st st blah, blah, stats that it does, but I recall it being a relatively Raiden, strong, powerful upgrade. Yeah. The waypoint is marked on your solid radar. Where's the kitty? Where's the kitty? Gotta find that kitty. There's a the kitty oh, cat. I'm going. There's the cat and. Uh, did I? No, I decided to actually leave the cat alone, but... Uh, Seriously, I... that cat is, Sa like, is more better at dodging blades than Ryan is. Yeah, those who don't know, cats are fucking super ninja. No matter how much Ryder slices, says he cannot hit those bastards at all. And what you saw right there 
right after I parry that guy's attack. That's the new mechanic introduced in this chapter, Sandatsu. Basically, slay your, slay your opponent where that red square is, and you're going to extract their stuff from their spine, which reveals your health and that's Zandetsu? Meter? Yeah, that's why it's called yeah. Sandatsu. I think he likes his new blade. Oh yeah, that is a hell of a lot better <laughs> than the previous one. Just gonna How say right feel? away. You gotta think, is like this body, is, is he actually no projecting way. that hologram or is it just like kinda of like a like something in the HDMI like, like that cable thing around his head now? That's projecting it. Um, that's good question. Then, then I don't know. I guess it's sort of a like I don't know. Maybe there's a miniature projector injected into his other eye or something. <laughs> I like how this guy keeps moving her cognom. Cause I have, cause <laughs> she's like a title clot. Yeah. I will admit, Metal Gear, be it the main series or the spin-off, the spin-off game, they do nice enough work to have their own little jokes and gags in the series. Like I think the main Metal Gear series has that one guy who always has a freaky stomach problem. Johnny, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> Easy there, Dracula. Like I said, there's still people. People who terrorize and take innocent lives for money. They sowed their fate when they took this job. I'm just Ooh, the Reaper. That's cold, man. Damn. Yup. <laughs> that ideology <laughs> is going to be challenged quite a bit later down in this game. But that's that's for when it's actually happening. Right. Okay, so after that hefty cutscene, time to actually continue on with the game. And S rank, booyah! Oh, uh, I did a bit of background checking on Ryan's history, and yeah, like at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4, he didn't. Like he was, he actually stayed as a cyborg. They just gave him an artificial skin, but uh, due to his look, it was hard for him to get a job. And it, well, after Boris came up to him and said, "Hey, uh, you're looking for a job? Uh, I can, or some like send you up with something." That's why we saw saw him wearing his uh, earlier armor kind of thing in the first part or tutorial thing. And then, yeah. like, that's the reason why he still had red blood, because Boris yeah. had changed, like, all the muscle fiber and stuff in there, and, yeah, basically, because, like, the white blood cell stuff, I think, was just basically, like, a prototype kind of thing. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. yeah, I can imagine that if you kind of had a history as being a murderous child soldier and then got turned into a cyborg, yeah, I don't see Raiden taking up office job that easily. Though, admittedly, having a cyborg secretarian does sound pretty badass. But yeah, it was just like hard for him to try and find a job after the SOP incidents because like yeah. you know, he was a cyborg and um oh what was it like it was kind of like how oh well, I guess like what was it called the Great Depression or something that kind of thing when it was hard to find jobs with anywhere around mm, yeah 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 and okay this is kind of a joke that we. Kinda of did already at the very first part of this, and <laughs> in the original recording of the part two, we already went a little bit further. But might as well bring this up again because I read it somehow keeps fucking in my mind, although it really shouldn't. And we questioned what was Raiden compensating for when he sliced up the Metal Gear Ray <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> Yeah. But now, with this new cyber buddy, I even have to question more. Does he even anymore have anything to compensate for? Oh. I mean, yeah, he, he 
does seem, and once again, this is a detail that I really shouldn't be paying too much attention to, but... Still, he does seem to be sporting some sort of a cock piece, so I don't know, maybe there is still something left in there. No, uh, oh, that is actually a good question, because, well, he's a cyborg, but then that would mean he wouldn't have any of his actual parts on him. Yeah. <laughs> But it's clear that, well, yeah, he has a child and a wife, but it's pretty clear that she, he must have knocked him up way before he... Yeah, that was way before Metal Gear Solid 4. That was, like, uh, I guess probably during the events of Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. And here, as you could see there, we had a... <sighs> Rocket launcher. Alien <laughs> hostage there. There's, there once again, another optional thing you can do. It's not required, but... They're just there if you wanna score some hefty extra points. But as you could see there, I can't do good of a job up about that because because saving them can sometimes be a little bit annoying because there tend to be a hell of a lot of enemies around the area and you basically need that almost sneak kill all of them as well, try to to direct the enemy fire away from the hostage, so because of that, my basic sentiment for this run was that if I see hostages, I will try to save them, but if I fail, then I fail. I'm not going to mourn about it too much. Yeah. Actually, if you do, like, if you try to save the hostage and they die, if you make a codec call to any of the characters, he, Ryan does talk to him saying, like, Ugh, I, I wish I could have just saved him. But he has yeah, guilt I... for doing so. Yeah, that it is a nice, um, nice little detail. You know, oh, and uh, actually, good thing that you brought up the codec calls because, because basically, whenever I'm saving in this game, I'm going to have a little bit of a codec calls because some of the stuff that the guys say on the other side at certain points of the chapter is a uh, relatively hilarious, hilarious or just interesting stuff. But for the sake of mood getting things moving along, I decided to cut the most of the codec calls out, the ones that aren't necessary free or mandatory to hear. It's a kangaroo cow! It's a giant kangaroo mecha, mecha cow! This thing... Okay, I played this game before I even knew about the stuff going on in Metal Gear. Or so it for so this thing always confused me because I wondered what purpose does a freaking robot but that jumps around like a fucking kangaroo but sounds like a cow serves. Hmm. This thing always confused me before I realized that this was a gecko robot. Hmm. Ba uh, basically just mini Metal Gear Rexes, in a way, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, Wait. sort of a like land. Just, one just mini Metal Gears. <laughs> yeah, and I will admit I'm doing absolute shit here because, <laughs> because ay 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 ay. I usually tend to practice a little bit before I start the actual recording, but I kept an unreasonably long. On while between this recording and my previous practice session, so I'm way out of touch here. But to my defense, these geckos can be really annoying to deal with simply because they usually are with a larger group of smaller mooks, which can easily gang up, gang yeah. up on you, as you could easily see during that fight. Very good, Raiden. Now. For and sometime we can go bowling. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 Boris. I just got out of, out of vacation from Liberty City. My God, <laughs> Liberty? No, not Liberty City. What? The um, fuck? Anywho, there was this one fucking guy who kept constantly calling me. Yeah, Liberty call, City. Called me. Me fucking cuss and then constantly ask me to go bowling ball. I don't even wanna hear the word bowling anymore. 
That would be actually be really interesting crossover to see Metal Raiden in Grand Theft Auto. My god, the damage. The damage. Raiden, friend, let's go bowling. For the last time. Um, uh, what was... Oh, oh god, what's his name? <laughs> I can't remember it now. Neither do I. And this is basically a section where you can be stealthy if you want to and as for this kind of a section because there's a few of these in the game Kind of similar mindset as with the hostages that if I can successfully stealth kill I will stealth kill but for the most part if I fuck up or get noticed then I'm just gonna go with the flow Like so <laughs> And I did a slight kick at the absolute wrong time The trick is, uh, you have to sneak up behind him, not run up behind him. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was... That's what I was trying to do. Do... Ooh, but, alas, I wasn't quite successful, plus... Well... Usually when it comes to stealth, I tend to usually be really slow about it, and that doesn't necessarily make it... It's really interesting to watch. But if the game isn't completely based around it, so I decided to go a little bit more reckless than I usually do during this mm. during this playthrough. You're just getting your ass just kicked. Just once again, keep things moving on. Yeah. Decapitation. Oh yeah. And sadly wasn't able to do the Sandatsu on any of them, so a little bit of a, a more unmoderable on the midway held right now. Oh, and we are coming up the midway pass of the chapter. Open sesame. Hmm. Oh, you mean like a couple of feet right in front of me? Roman, that's it! Check it out. We may be able to salvage some intel. Oh, now you recall. <laughs> <laughs> what did just Boris suddenly popping you up? Like somehow reminded you? Uh, kind of. I was just like, I was just still thinking in my head after I was trying to do that conversation thing. I was like, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> Got just letting out my frustration because of my socket and breaking up these bleeding boxes. There we go, feeling a little bit better now. And let's see, did I or did I not? Yes, I do. Oh, just putting out the repair nano base, which are basically other heals in this game in that if you go down to zero you if you equip the nano base you automatically use one and go back to full health my personal recommendation keep them them unequipped until you're going up against the boss because though the game does give you plenty of them at the beginning they, trust me they become really scarce later down in the road so you wanna save them up Oh shit, Ryan's going to the Texas Chainsaw's scenery. God damn, Letterface is not fucking around. Decided to up, up the antics. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know why basically, I uh, the, reference. the thing you just talked about, the Robo Pay stuff, that's just basic. That, that was uh, rations. I want 
I don't recall who exactly is the voice actor okay, for, for the this cyborg here who we are going to actually give a name to later down in the road. Might actually become our partner, hint hint, but I know the voice is a little bit altered Edited. to sound mechanic, yeah. but I think the voice actor actually fits pretty well for this thing. That's it. I'm not really sure now. Simple thinking for such a mighty intellect. Oh, and I already commented that the the team with Jetri and Sam is my favorite battle team, but this come as a close second. Hmm. What good is an intellect if you can't the team that we're going to hear, especially the one that has the acoustic start. Anyway, mid boss time. Oh, he's so cute. Can we keep him? Well, if you don't mind him shoving up a chainsaw up in your ass like that, then yes, we can keep him. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> hell no. Oh yes, and uh, basically my tips on this fight, as long as this thing is on the field, always keep a lock on him, because you want to be aware on which direction the attacks are coming from, because if you haven't bothered trying carrying too much before, or trust me, it's almost mandatory in this fight if you wanna freaking survive because those attacks really freaking hurt. Especially the one that where he launches at you and and once he comes down for the second time, he's going to have an attack where he launches multiple times, and on the last one, he can pin you down and then pretty much shove his chainsaw right down to your chest. <laughs> so yeah. Come here, boy! Let's do it ya! <laughs> and... Uh, I admit, I didn't do exactly perfect on this fight. I can usually... I think I've actually managed to cut an ass rank on this fight. I... I... Relatively easy on some of my earlier... Here attempts, but... Uh, sometimes, depending on how the freaking camera decides to act, act and where you are, some of, some of the attacks can be a little bit hard to see and thus a little bit difficult to parry, so... For justice! I fight for my friends! No! 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 I dig it, you told me. You are sick of that reference too? Yep. Thanks for the free heals. <laughs> now time to cut domesticate this puppy. This is the attack that I was talking about. Uh. You wanna definitely block out that last rush at you, otherwise that's going to take a surprisingly large amount of your health. <laughs> And we are just about to finish him Get up, and now be. We are just about to finish him up, and now behold how the camera angle decides to fuck this epic moment. <laughs> well, you saw it didn't have him in the corner. <laughs> trust me, trust me, I'm killing him, I'm killing him, I'm killing him. Fucking camera angle. Despite being blown to smithereens, he somehow comes back later on, okay? I don't know how the hell you can actually build something back up from dirt into dust, but I'm not going to question it. Anywho, that concludes part 3 of the Metal Gear Rising run. And we shall continue on with the chapter on the next part.
Until that time, this is Dr. Chan Reborn. And I'm Shank02. Saying bye bye everyone. See us later. See us.